In a hot summer's day, Shanae and her son Jun drive through the roads of rural Korea. After losing her husband, Shanae decides to fulfill his dream of moving back to his city of birth. Abandoning her life in Seoul, she hopes to have a brand new start with her son. Life seems hopeful and pleasant as they bathe under the sun of Miryang, the city with the name that means secret sunshine. Will that sunshine envelop their new life with warmness and hospitality? Or does it hide a malicious secret that will crash all of their hopes for a brighter future? I kind of related to the protagonist in the beginning of the story, where she tries to adjust to the small city. She's a straightforward person, and a lot of the interactions she has with the locals seems odd to her. Song Kang Ho's character keeps intruding her personal space, although with the intents of being helpful, but also because he develops romantic feelings for her. When she gives a genuine advice to the clothing store owner, the latter gets extremely irritated, since to her, it seems like a criticism. The owner of the drugstore keeps on nagging Shanae to join the church. All of these people seem so odd to her, but she still continues her journey in the city, establishing a small piano school and taking care of her son. But a small town like this has its downsides too. A tight-knit community means that there are no secrets and everything spreads around quickly. Shanae hopes to buy a land and build a new house for her and her son, but her plans and dreams turn into a nightmare pretty soon. Finding out that this defenseless lady has money makes her a target and her son gets kidnapped. From here on, anyone who doesn't know anything about Lee Chang Dong's movies would assume that the rest of the story will follow an investigation of this case. But Secret Sunshine is not a thrilling detective film about a tragic case. It is about ways that our lead character deals with her loss. Also, it is pretty obvious who the kidnapper is, the school teacher, even the police suspects him right away. I was frustrated when Shanae didn't tell anyone about the kidnapping and also followed the instructions of the kidnapper through and through, despite him not letting her even hear her son June's voice. But who am I to judge? Luckily, I have never been in a situation like that and when simply watching a movie, it is much easier to reasonably think about things. But in the heat of the moment, just to hear your loved one's voice again, you would scale any mountains, whatever it takes. Unfortunately though, Shanae gets a call from the police as they find June's cold body near a lake. She loses her precious little boy, so what is there even left for her in this life, in this city? She can't even shed tears at first. She tries to continue her life, even her piano tutoring, but she soon breaks. When the rug is pulled out from under you, you need something new to stabilize everything. A table with only three legs cannot stand on its own. The grief and weight of despair chokes Shanae. She can't stand on her own anymore, and in that state, she crawls into the church. Crying out loud, trying to break free, and in that moment, the pastor lays his hand on her head. The chains that were clutching her finally loosen up and Shanae is able to exhale. In the beginning of the story, our lead's relationship with faith and God is something similar to my own. But in this moment of need where she was all alone, bereft of love and care, she's able to find that warmness through her newly gained faith. So she starts going to church regularly and becomes very close with the rest of the community. She even seems happy. It seemed odd to me how she was able to make that 180 degree shift. People don't heal that quickly. But the point is that she wasn't healed. No matter how much she tried to hide behind God's love, her pain was still there, just sealed away in the depths of her heart, waiting to break out and remind her of everything she's trying to run away from. And that happens soon enough. Driving deeper and deeper into her faith, Shanae decides that the next step is to forgive her son's murderer. But there's a great scene before her visit. While Shanae is driving to her birthday party, she notices the daughter of that criminal getting bullied. She doesn't take action though, she just watches and then drives away. Right after that, she nearly hits a man with her car. It almost felt like a punishment from God for not lending a hand to that kid. Or, and this theory has more basis, 
this very scene is the representation of that pain sealed away that I mentioned a minute ago. No matter how much she's trying to be a god's child, that hatred she has in her cannot be totally erased. With this one little moment, Li Chang Dong lets the audience know that there are cracks that are becoming apparent. But I still want to applaud this character for mustering up the courage to visit the man who took her son's life and attempt to forgive him. But as soon as she sits down in front of that man, the seal starts to rip little by little. This man seems to be doing fine. There is even a smile on his face. How dare he feel happy after destroying my life is what goes through her head. But the final nail in the coffin is when the prisoner tells her that God has already forgiven him. That God that she believed in and accepted into her life has forgiven a man who murdered a child. She steps out of the building and the seal is now torn away. That pain swallows her whole and she collapses. From one perspective, this community reached out to her and helped her to forget about her problems. She was able to find temporary balance in her life, but it was just that, temporary. When unfortunate events happen in our lives, most of us choose to sit in the corner and rot away, as our heart keeps aching. Some have no choice but to keep on moving, but what most of us do is we try to push away those feelings. Sinead needed support and kindness at that moment in her life, not belief in God. That faith served as a distractor. It was just a matter of time when all that trauma would break her again. What Sinead needed instead was to learn to heal, slowly but surely making strides each day to calm down and get back on her feet. It was not supposed to be a fast process, but it would be a gradual and a rewarding one. Healing and not running away. Sometimes when negative and destructive thoughts start creeping into my head, I try to run away by means of drowning in fictional worlds. It's not a healthy way to cope though. Instead, it's always better to take a small step further, just one small step and keep going, no matter how difficult it is. After feeling like she was betrayed by God, Sinead tries to go against that faith. She tries to replace the purity with filth. She wants to make people pay. Another unhealthy way of coping, she drives herself into madness. She looks up at the sky as if to say, I'm not going to lose to you. If God exists, why did he take her precious boy away? Why did he forgive that sinner who seems to be doing better than Sinead herself? How dare he? And so the final shackle shatters as well, and in her lowest moment, she tries to take her own life. She doesn't want to die though, she wants help, she wants someone to save her. The next scene takes place a while after that incident, and Sinead is getting released from the hospital. And the first thing she wants to do is to get a haircut, but the girl who will be cutting her hair is that criminal's daughter. Sinead storms out and looks up at the sky, so you're still messing with me, she thinks. The movie ends with Sinead trimming her own hair. Her battle against God is not over yet. She still feels taunted. However, with the support of others and with time, her wounds will eventually heal. Secret Sunshine is a tragic story of a woman who hopes to start a new life as that radiant sun shines down on her. But as it always happens, things just never turn out exactly the way you want them to. Sometimes a horrible tragedy befalls an individual, but life goes on. You move on and continue, and that's where Shine is at the end of the story. Not happy, not fully healed, but moving forward nonetheless. At the end of the day, that's all we can do. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel after all. A secret sunshine that could suddenly appear as the gray clouds part ways.